walked in, I mean, it was like this overwhelming like feeling of euphoria. I felt wanted. I felt like this is where I needed to be. I didn't used to want to go to church, but now it's like I can't wait until Sunday. It was just time to show everybody that love really does work. Cornerstone, y'all. Y'all excited? Let's do this. Thank you. 
You 
mend every broken line. You're the answer to it all, to it all. song can we give him some praise this morning come on you can do better than that let's give him some praise this morning he's all those things amen well, my name is hunter i just want to welcome you to cornerstone if this is your first time or maybe first time watching online we just want to tell you uh, man that we are so um, honored that you would spend your time here that you spend your time watching Amen, and we love you so much. If you're a first-time guest, we want to tell you that this isn't a place you have to feel uncomfortable or um, wonder what's next. Um, we're going to keep you safe, amen. We're going to keep you safe um, as far as we're not going to call you out. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to single you out. We're not going to ask you to do anything that um, maybe would make you uncomfortable, amen. So um, as we were singing that song, I was just thinking about Back in the day when we played sports, back in the day, <laughs> that's how old I am. <laughs> back in the day, we um, we played ball, and still to this day, we played some some ball. And um, I heard Michael Jordan say say this. He said, uh, uh, "Any trash talkers out there? Y'all y'all know? Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor. But maybe maybe your trash talker beside you." And um, so he said, "Well, I don't really worry about." He said, "I really don't worry about the people who." Um, trash talk while they're ahead because everybody can do that but sometimes like when when the score is not in your favor if you can still talk then, then he said then I, I, I know you're serious right 
And I just want to remind somebody today that maybe the scoreboard don't look like it's in your favor right now. Maybe your bank account don't look right. Maybe your family's not lining up right. But if you keep talking trash, what do you mean trash? I mean truth. When you start talking about, hey, don't forget, devil, the way maker's on my side. <laughs> the promise keeper's on my team. Amen. Come on, when you just spit that truth a little bit, Come on, somebody. The devil starts shaking. He gets nervous. Come on, somebody. Man, reason you can talk, tr you can talk truth when you're behind is because you know how it's going to end. Amen? You're going to win. You're going to win. You're going to win. Amen? All right, we got some video announcements. You can be seated as you watch them. Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers out there. We're so excited that you chose to join us today. We have an awesome service planned just for you. But right now, we'd love to take this time to get to know you. The best way for us to do so is our Connect cards. These cards are located in the back of the seat in front of you. They're great if you have a prayer request you'd love us to pray about, if you accept Jesus Christ today, or if it's your first time with us. Take this time, fill that Connect card out, then drop the offer container at the end of service. If you're watching online, there is a link in the description of this video. Also, if you are new, don't forget to fill the bottom portion of those cards, tear it out, and take it out to our Welcome Center, the front foyer, where we have a free gift you can pick up. Hi, church family. I'm so excited to tell you that Serve Day is coming, and it's July 11th. Everyone is welcome to go to life at cornerstone slash serve day to sign up and serve. This is going to be an amazing time to build relationships within our team and to come together and serve our community. What's up, Impact students? My name's Hunter. I'm the student pastor here with my wife, Tiffany Sparks, and we just want to invite you to two of the biggest events we have all year. The first one is Motion Conference. It's coming up July the 22nd through the 25th. It's here at the church. And this year, if you've already paid $100 for your deposit, then you're good to go. The, the, the whole fee is $100 that covers all your food, covers everything for Motion Conference this year, and you get to sleep in your bed every night. So that's awesome, all right? The next event I'm gonna tell you about is Worship Under the Stars. It also happens here, outside, in the parking lot. It's an amazing event of worship. Friday night and Saturday night, that's July the 31st and August the 1st. Uh, that, that event's gonna be $30 this year, okay? You can go to heretoimpact.com and register for both of those events. Um, register for motion by July the 1st and Worship Under Stars by July the 8th. We'd love to see you there. And if you want more info on this, follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Instagram uh, is impact students underscore. And you can look us up on Facebook. We love you guys. Can't wait to see you there. Invite some friends. Well, that's it for your Cornerstone Church News. Now we hope you enjoy the rest of the service. to see you and happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Give a fathers. Come on, give it up for the fathers. Hey Amen. If you're watching online, I'd like to say happy Father's Day to you. Thank you for joining in today. Uh, I'm glad you're here today. I'm, I believe today's going to be a blessing and we're going to have a great time and all. But uh, uh, today's Father's Day. We got a free gift for you and different things. Now, we didn't get to have service when it was Mother's Day, so next year y'all get doubled up, mothers. All right, mothers, you get doubled up. Amen. Before I get into the Word, I'd like to say a few things. Uh, 
like especially the people listening online or watching online is, is uh, we know some people are not ready to come yet, not able to come back yet. And don't you know, we're working hard to get our services live at 9 and 11 o'clock because we know 12 o'clock is not the ideal time. We've been having to record services and then put them up in between the services. But you know what? We made a big, big, big push this week and got a lot of things done. We brought in some people to help us with this so that we can go live for forevermore. Amen. I don't know if it'll be next week or the next whatever, but I'm telling you, we're working on it. Don't you know you, our church family that watches online, not able to come yet or not ready to come yet. We know it's important that you be able to go to your regular 9 or 11 a.m. service online, and we're working hard on that. I want y'all to give our own online church family a big old hand clap. Amen. I'm telling you, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's not because of lack of our video team, uh, sound team. They've been working hard, and we was having issues, and we're still getting it fixed, and we're looking forward to it. Amen. And as Hunter's already said, if you're a guest for the very first time, welcome home. Now let me say this, serve day's coming up. She, Susan told me in the staff meeting she needed me to give it a little hit here in the service. So, you know, when the gospel begins to change your hearts, it begins to first change your hearts about other people. And when we begin to grow and mature and really get a hold of the heart of God, our attention begins to move off us and begin to move on other people, the needs of other people. You can tell you're growing in the things of God when you become more concerned for other people than you are for yourself. And you know, when you look around, you see needs of others. God wants to use you to help meet those needs and stuff. So now it's time to put on our tennis shoes, our sunblock, and go out and serve on serve day. Now's a great time to serve health care workers, law enforcement, nursing home. I think our worship team's going to the, the jail. Is that right? They're going to the jail to play for the inmates? I said, well, y'all play jailhouse rock for them. <laughs> you, know, so, you know, they deserve something good to come in their life. Amen. And stuff, and we would like to see our dream team leaders get your team together and do something. Amen. There's a few things up on the app already, but let's all get together. Let's do this. And we've learned to do the projects earlier why it's cooler. And you know, I'm an early bird. You know, I don't mind 7 30, 10 30. If it's me, we'd start at 5, be done by 7 30. <laughs> Any of my people out there? Two. That ain't enough to carry out that project. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, amen. If you had a winter small group, if you had a winter small group, get those people together and let's serve some people and stuff and be a blessing to different people, amen? But uh, anyway, like I said, we've got a gift for all you fathers. Let me see that hat. Man, look at that. Bring your hat up here. That's a good-looking hat. Y'all like that hat right there? That's a good-looking hat right there. It's got that little symbol over there that most people don't know what it is. So you can invite them to church, okay? Amen, amen. But I'll also I'd like to say happy Father's Day to my daddy, Wayne Collins. Come up here and let's give you a gift, daddy. You're going to be on YouTube, Facebook Live, and everything. All right. He come to the first service. You got to go home and get ready for all of us today, don't you? I love you. I love you. He's a good man. Daddy, daddy all right. clean up behind all this stuff. Everybody calls him granddaddy. Y'all give granddaddy a hand clap. Have I told you lately how much I love you? I hadn't, I guess. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the incorruptible seed, the living word of God that lives and abides forever. Your word not only has your faith in it, but it has your character, your nature. Father, I pray that the word today that's ministered is not just a subject, but it becomes the very uh, atmosphere of this room and in our hearts. Father, thank you for speaking to me so you can speak through me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us today and leading and guiding us in truth. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I want to talk to you today about the value of a father. We'll get back to adult in next week. That series has been broke up a good bit. You know, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we'll go there in a minute about how God formed man from the dust of the ground. But in Genesis, God's bringing about his creation. And in the sixth day, he gets to the highest order of his creation, which is man. And when he creates man, he said, let us create him in our image, in our likeness. And then he told that man, he said, hey, you go have dominion and you subdue all our enemies. And what you want you to understand is man was first created a spirit. The real use of spirit. He first created man a spirit in Genesis 1, 26. See, God didn't create man with blue eyes, green eyes, brown hair, 
black skin, white skin, brown skin. He created him a spirit. Then when you get to chapter 2, you start... He starts talking about creation. He goes a little farther and talks about how he forms him. So let's listen to what it says here in Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed. That's important. There, Man came from God. Not the dirt part. The real part of him came from God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. So he formed him from the dust of the ground. But he first created man a spirit and then gave him a body to live in. You know, here's the thing. of The thing we usually take the most care of is the thing that's going to be the most temporal in this life. I mean, I know one day you're going to lay this old body down. But what I want you to see this morning, men, is I challenge you here. God formed Adam. Nobody can shape a man better than God. Nobody can form a man better than God can. And he does it through his word. He does it through his spirit and other spiritual relationships. And even though you may have experienced tough things in your life, been through hard things in your life, God never wants you to use that as an excuse that you cannot fulfill the intent and purpose he had for you. Because God has a way of taking your good days, your bad days, you wish you had them over days, and putting them all together and forming you into the person he wants you to be. The last thing I'd ever do on Father's Day is come up in here and beat up on men because they get beat up on enough. And ladies, you can still listen in today. You say, well, why didn't you just have a men's meeting? Well, if you're single, you need to listen because you need to know what to look for because some of you have been shopping at the wrong place. And if you're married, you need to know how to, what to pray for your husband. Can I get a good amen? You know, the reality is if we could get this, it'd answer a lot of the issues in the world. If we could realize the fact that men carry an impact. Let me rephrase it. Fathers carry such an impact whether they're present or not. Hmm. Some of you, your lives is better. You have great memories. If your father's done in heaven because your father was present. Your life has been impacted because they were present. But there's others in here your life has been impacted because your father was not present. See, listen to me. God ordained a father to carry such influence that whether he's present or not, it still impacts the people in his life. Because a father can't pass through this world without having influence on somebody's life. Listen to what it says here in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. It starts with the men first. And the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest they come and strike the earth with a curse. Now, if you was reading that in your Bible, Malachi 4, that's the last verses of the Old Testament. And probably in your Bible, the next page would be a blank page. And then there's 400 years of nothing after that. And then you get to Matthew. And the first thing Jesus done when he got here in this earth was he went and found him 12 men. And he started mentoring them. And he started doing, he, he, he got cussers, fishers, businessmen. He got all kind of folks. Listen to me. He went and got 12 men and started working with them and mentoring because he knew if I'm going to break this curse that's in the earth. I'm not talking about sickness and disease and stuff. If I'm going to break this curse in this earth, I got to fix men. And I can't fix this earth till I start fixing men. And he started fixing men. Can I get a good amen? amen? Did you know some men have never had another man tell them, I love you? Women and little girls suffer when there's no authentic manhood. Kids suffer because they go without something God meant for them to have. A woman suffers. A mother 
trying to fill that void because she's trying to fill a void she wasn't meant to fill. It's get better in a minute. Tell somebody it get better in a minute. Some men have never had another man tell you, I'm proud of you. I want you to know this morning, I'm proud of you. I said I'm proud of you. The word father in Hebrew means Alba. That's all it means is Alba means the sustainer, the source, the protector. But God said nobody can shape a man like him. Nobody can form you better than God can form you. And God will always shape you men according to his purpose. Now listen to me, listen to me. You need to listen right here. Every man in this building don't supposed to look alike. Every man in this building don't supposed to dress alike. Every man in this building don't supposed to have the same personality, the same kind of fashion, the same kind of habits, but every man in this building should be shaped by God. Hollywood. Sitcoms promote that you can only be a man if you have sex with a lot of different girls. Got a bass boat and guns and you go to the gym five days a week. Or else on the other hand, you're somebody's wimp that won't never stand up to nobody. The truth is neither one of them are right. The truth is neither one of them are correct. There's an incredible treasure inside of every man in this building today. There's value in all of you in this building today. You may feel like you're a failure, but I come this morning to tell you there's value inside of you. And it's never too late to start. Failure is never fatal, but not changing can be fatal. Listen to Proverbs 20 verse 5. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Other words, God puts people in your life to pull out of you what God put in you. There's some things that have never come out of you except you're in the right, godly, manly relationships with other men. That's why small groups are important when they get going again. But notice he says, counsel's down in you. The answers are down in you. The wisdom's down in you. But you got to let other people help draw it out of you. Or you live all your life with a treasure hid inside of you, covered up. There's a Pixar movie. I got grandbabies. With a character named Russell. And the show's called, one person, and the show was called Up. And he's one badge away, one badge away from being senior wilderness explorer. And the moment draws near when all the boys and campers are coming in and the dads are gathering in because they're getting ready to go up on the stage and Russell looks around, he sees all the fathers coming in and sitting by their sons and different stuff like that. And you know, then the camp master, what he does, he takes the badge and he hands it to the father and the father takes the badge and puts it on the, on the son. And Russell's looking around. Anybody ever seen this? Russell's looking around and on the most important day of his life, his daddy was not there. I've discovered that's happened a lot in life to a lot of people. Their fathers just was not there. And that's a tragedy. But we can be somebody who starts changing it today. In America, thank you for that. In America, that's the message. In America, 20 million kids have no contact with their father. Only 60% of kids in America, I'm not hating on y'all, listen to me. 60% of kids in America only live with both parents. The wounds of a father, I could have named this daddy issues and preached something else. The wounds of a father go deep down and stay open for a long time. Now listen to me, that results in behavior, challenges, lack of identity, lack of identity, driven to do things. You don't know where you fit in. Fear of failure can all be manifestations of a lack of a father figure 
in your life. But God will raise up father figures around you. I want all of us in this room today to understand the value of a father. I'm glad we're giving caps away today. Y'all ain't going to leave. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, an actress, a good actress. You know, and the things I think we've all seen her behavior issues. I think we've seen it played out on TV, how she's got addicted and wrecked her life and different things. She said it was because of my daddy. Steve Harvey was interviewing her daddy. And he said, well, Lindsay's, all her issues are well documented. She's been in rehab over six times. He said, but I take all the responsibility. All Lindsay was trying to do was numb the pain and drown the sorrows that I put on her. Sometimes we see fruit, but we don't see the root. Ephesians 6, listen to what it says here, verse 2. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. It's easy to look around the world we live in now and see that it's not going well. There's a lot of issues in the world. And what we don't realize, a lot of these stem from father issues. And whether your father was absent, present, or whatever it was, God wants to heal your heart today. And again, I want to tell you, fathers, you're valuable. Say, yes, I am. Don't ever underestimate your role lightly. So I got just a few minutes left, so I want to give you four reasons a father's valuable. Look at number one. Fathers help us give us our identity. Just like you get your identity from your heavenly father. I think fathers need to understand the importance and the role they play in helping our children discover their identity. It's important you speak the word to them, speak over them in different things. Now listen to me. Have you realized in this world we're in an identity crisis? They're going to pull you a picture up of this guy right here. Maybe y'all know this guy. Y'all didn't know, oh, I'm, I'm looking for somebody. We might, we might have to pull out Mickey Mouse after a while. Who is this? That's Buddy. If you got grandkids, you're going to watch it again this year. It don't matter. That's Buddy the Elf. Buddy plays with the elves, works with the elves, makes toys with the elves, works on Santa's sleigh with the elves. It's just one problem. Buddy ain't an elf. Everyone knows Buddy's not an elf, but Buddy. That whole show was about him trying to reconnect with his father. And because he only knows how to be an elf, it causes him constant humiliation and confusion. So we're praying for you, Buddy. You get your identity from God the Father. Are you listening to me? And then the Father passes that on down to his kids. The more you know the Father, the more you're going to know you, men and women. Listen to Matthew 3, verse 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, now watch this, this is my beloved son, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus at his baptism, when he came up out of the water, noticed two things was said to him, approval and identity. Two things was said to him, every girl, every son, needs these two things. Identity, this is my son. This is my son. Number two, he needed approval. I'm pleased with you. You hadn't healed no sick people. You hadn't cast out no devils because I love you not based on your performance. God would not have spoken that to Jesus if it was not necessary. God felt like he needed to have approval and identity. And I want you to tell you, if you're, you, listen, if you're, if you're a single mother raising your uh, children today, happy Father's Day. 
there's grace on you to fulfill this and your kids will never be less than because you're letting God fill all the gaps and the cracks. Amen? Now, listen, this next statement here, I've given it to you the last four years on Father's Day. Notice this next statement. The approval of a father always empowers a son or a daughter. I know that, I, have y'all noticed I put that up here the last four years? Because that's something God spoke to me years ago. The approval of a father always empowers a son or a daughter. Listen to 2 Corinthians 6.18. Are we okay today? I'll be a father to you and you should be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. He said, I'll be a father to you. I'll be someone who cares for you. Listen, you don't have to get your identity. I'm talking to grown men now. You don't have to get your identity from somebody else. You don't have to be in a gang. You don't have to get your fashion from Instagram. You don't have to get a car like they got on Facebook. Let God be your fashion. Let God be your... Don't look somewhere else to get your identity. It's just something about knowing your heavenly father that brings a peace. I know this is a kind of a serious Father's Day message, but I don't want us to come in here, clap, get a gift, and go home without life change. Number two, fathers help guide us and help us succeed. They help guide us and help us succeed. Don't just leave your children alone. Don't just leave them to do what they want to do. Sometimes we become too busy. Have you ever noticed you ain't ever wasted a moment investing in your kids? And you ever notice they want you to invest in them? At the worst time possible, seem like. Yeah, they do. Whew. Lincoln, my grandbaby want me to ride around the block with him yesterday on a bicycle. I thought, son, I done exercise a little bit today. That's about all you're going to get out of Papa. But when he looked at me, I said, Phew, here we go. Psalms 127, listen what it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children in one's youth. Happy is the man has his quiver full of them. Listen, one kid can be a quiver full. Some of y'all got that kid, ain't you? One child can be a quiver full, so I don't mean you got a bunch of kids. <laughs> Oh, where am I at? They should not be ashamed. Blah, 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 blah. I don't blow that up. Just look at that arrows in the hand of a warrior. They like arrows in the hand of a warrior. Your children are supposed to not just be in your house, but in your hand. That you're guiding them. And the best, only way you can be guided correctly is let the Holy Spirit guide you. And don't leave it to the church to train your kids. God wants to guide you so you can guide your children. And let me say this. What I'm seeing in the world, if you don't have the proper father authority or proper authority in your life, these kids are not bothering me. I raised three girls that brought somebody home with them, that brought somebody home with them, that brought somebody home with them. <laughs> Anybody lived at that house? But anyway, see, here's the thing of it is I, what I've learned in life is if somebody don't have a proper father figure, they gravitate toward wrong authority figures. Number three, number three, fathers free us from a lack of life balance. Fathers free us from a lack of life balance. What do you mean by that? So many people's lives are out of balance. People are obsessed with money, materialism, career, work. And we're raising up a generation that puts their work ahead of their kids because it wouldn't model to them. Some are working hard to prove themselves because they never had the approval of a father. And some are working hard because you told me I'd never amount to nothing. You told me I'd never have nothing, so I'm going to do it. If I'm going to do it just to prove you wrong. And by the way, I, you have been dead and in the grave for 20 years, but I'm still proving you wrong. There's people who can't even do nothing stuff now. Their parents have been dead for years and they still wonder what they think. You know, you, you teach these kids to have a good work ethic. We need a good work ethic. We need good trades people. Come on now. It's hard to get a lawnmower worked on. I'm serious. 
you young men, you want to make some money, get in a trade. A mechanic or something. They begging for them. Weld and all this other stuff. I don't know why I said that. Maybe somebody's trying to make a decision. But I'm telling you, trades, farmers. (laughs) We don't have farmers. I don't care how many times you go to Walmart. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I think we've kind of seen during this virus what is the backbone of America. When you get up early, I'm not saying I'm not saying one job's more important than other. But when you get up in the morning, you see all them trucks with them ladders on it and them cables hanging off from it. That's kind of the insides of America. But you tell you teach your kids to work. Say, I want you to be a great provider, but go home. Go home, spend time with your kids. Number four, you got me on the schedule. Fathers help us relate to authority. I can spend a lot of time here, but I'm going to spend the least of time here, I think. Fathers help us relate to authority. Have you noticed nobody respects authority no more? No mannerism. No honor. No respect. I was in Publix the other day. I try not to go to Publix no more than I have to because I always spend more than I want to. I was standing there in line and it was some young kids in front of me. I'm not hating on the young kids. I love all our young kids. And then it was an older lady in front of them and they went over and opened up a line. I said, next, or come over here. Who's supposed to went first? The person closest to the... And they just jumped out and run ahead of her. I can't tell you how bad I wanted to say I thought, no respect no more. The Bible says, Proverbs, when somebody old comes in the room, you're supposed to get up and give them your seat. That ain't what your papa told you. That ain't just what your papa said. Honor means how you refer to somebody, defer to somebody, and what you confer on somebody. George Washington Carver said, all a man's got to do is get filled with the Holy Ghost to have manners. He said, love, he said, if you put him on the backside of the desert, the old man done all that with a peanut. He said, manners just come naturally. He comes back to the father's teaching respect at home. Come on now, we can't listen and watch disrespectful stuff and then tell our kids to do the opposite of what, I can tell I ain't doing good today. On the way home, y'all pray for me on the next service. <laughs> Listen to 2 Corinthians 10, verse 8. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification and not for destruction. See, authority is not to boss people around. Authority is responsibility. Authority is to help people. Now, I understand you. Somebody's in a position, they got to make hard decisions, take care of things. But authority is for edification, to edify people, to build up, not to harm people. Amen. I'm going to begin to fin- finish to close with this story here. I thought about it yesterday. I was all the kids and grandkids over there swimming yesterday. And we had a lot of excitement. We got to see Legend pick up Colin, throw her in the swimming pool. There's just a lot of excitement around our house. Praise God. She come right back up to the top. <laughs> Ooh, wee. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Absalom in the Bible, one of David's sons. I was thinking about this year. Stuff. We should have preached on him. Absalom in the Bible was David. The Bible said he was the most handsome son. That long, blue hair, swaying the wind. Said he was handsome, had beautiful hair. One time, now this stuff, you can't make it up. You think you come from a dysfunctional family. This is David's family. One time his brother acted like he was sick. and He had his eyes on his own sister. 
she come in, he tricked her to come in, feed him something, and he tried to rape her, and she tried to stop him. Eventually, he did rape her. And it made Absalom mad, the brother, but he got mad because his daddy didn't say nothing. So eventually, Absalom says, I'll take care of this myself. And he just killed him. So here's what happened. When this happened, Absalom's in a bad shape because of what he done. But listen to me. For two years, David didn't have nothing to do with him. Two years, didn't have nothing to do with him. And that done more harm on Absalom than anything in his life. And because he hadn't been with his daddy around, his daddy hadn't done nothing for him in two years, he said, I'll show you. He went down to, he went down to the city and got David's concubines and started having sex with them right in front of the city to show, I'll prove you, daddy. You won't give me your attention? I'll get your attention. We wonder sometimes why kids act out, do these things. They're like, I'll get your attention, and I'm going to do the thing that despises you and hurts you the most. If David would have had one conversation one conversation and what I've learned is when we don't have the right authority figures we grab a hold of the wrong ones and we cling to them I want to close I want to talk to three people right quick three different kinds of people single parents if you're single parent God's enough I'm proud of you grace God's grace is sufficient you can fill all roles. Your kids don't lack because there's not a mom or daddy in their life. You and God is a majority. Amen? Second, I want to speak to the fathers in the house. You may feel like you're inadequate. You may have failed. That you're less than you should be. It's never too late to start. Step out today. Lead. Don't let culture get to you. I'm just going to be playing with you. It ain't been so long since I worked at a plant. Quit listening to all the men at work. Quit listening to all that garbage. Quit listening to all those mad talk shows. The Word of God is the only thing that's perfect. It's the expert. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Because your friends are extremely important or dangerous. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Listen to what it says here. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Listen to the New, new Living Version. Don't let anyone fool you. Bad people can make those who want to live good become bad. Thirdly, I want to talk to people who has been wounded by your father. You say, I, got, I know I got issues in my life. I'm driven to do things, or you're the opposite of that. I don't give a rip. I don't care how I live, who I live with, what I do, what nobody thinks. God wants to heal you. Maybe you're here today and you've got kids, and you say, I wish their daddy was in their life. I want to read this. Genesis 21. And the water in the skin was used up as she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of a bow shot, about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of my boy. So she sat opposite to him and lifted her voice and wept. She's crying over a kid. God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. God heard the kid through the mama. Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him with your hand. I'll make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes. She saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. He's about to die of thirst. Ishmael is a kid that was driven away by his daddy. He is a child of a slave woman. And he's pushed out into the desert. And he's, the skin of water's run out. And this is how a single parent felt. His mama, my kid's dying. There ain't nothing I can do. 
But when she began to cry, God said, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, and I hear your kid. Y'all better listen to me. He said, I hear you, and I hear your kid. Now you go lift them. You lift him up. And when you lift him up, something's going to happen. A great nation is going to come out of him. So God hears your cries, mama. God hears your cries, daddies. He hears them. And you know what he wants to do? Start lifting. But he wants to use you to lift them with. Can I get a good amen? Father, I bless all these fathers. I thank you they're valuable. They're important. I thank you for all the men in this church. I thank you for all our men, our church family watching online. I thank you that we're leader of leaders. I thank you that your word is the standard for our life. I thank you for reconciliation and restoration of broken and fragmented relationships. Thank you for an openness. Father, I pray for people today that their daddies are in heaven or as just soon went to heaven. I pray that you comfort them on this day because not this day don't have good memories for everybody. And I thank you for raising up men of God in this church. High quality, high caliber, not by their looks, not by where they live, but the word of God that's in their heart and on their mouth. And I thank you for that. With every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment, I want you to know today that God's not mad at you. Your sin and your mistakes are not keeping you from Him. He paid for all your sins. He paid for all your mistakes. God loves you. There's nothing you can do to make Him love you more. There's nothing you can do to make Him love you less. Jesus came to save, forgive, deliver, and restore. There's no life in here this morning so messed up. No sin so shocking. No addiction so dreadful that the blood of Jesus can't reach right down where you're at and cleanse you and raise you. And you're here today and you say, I want to be saved. I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of my life. I'm ready to give my heart to Him. I want to lead you in this prayer. And I want you to pray it from your heart. And church family, pray this out loud and boldly with them. This is a great time. We pray it sometimes on, on low key. Let's pray it. It's heaven's fixing to rejoice. Let's pray with these people. You say, I'm ready to be saved today. I'm ready to give my heart to Jesus. I'm not going to have you stand up. I'm not going to have you raise your hand. I want to lead you in this, this prayer. Are you ready? Pray this. Say, Father God, I believe in Jesus Christ that He is the Son of God. I believe that His blood paid for all my sins and that He arose from the dead so I could be forgiven. I give you my life today, Jesus. I thank you for forgiving me. You're my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Come on now. Give the Lord a hand now. Amen. Thank you all. I want us to pray that with more fervor. That's the greatest time in a, in a service right there. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today? I'd love to line all you men up today and bless you and all, but we're going to honor that for a while longer. But the Bible does say lay hands on the sick and on it and they recover. Amen. But thank you so much for coming today. We're making adjustments each week. I know sometimes it's a little awkward when you come in. I know it's a little awkward the way we dismiss, but we're moving in the right direction. Y'all good with that? Y'all good? Amen. Our last act of worship today is giving. If you want to give, they'll pull it up on the screen. There's four different ways you can give. But I want to thank you all for being generous. I want to thank you for being a blessing. You people have continued even those 11 or 12 weeks we went here. You just kept giving. You were steady. You know, I think that's why you decided in your heart it's not about church. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about helping other people. And I want to thank you for that. Amen. Well, I'm going to pray over the offering. They're going to sing a little bit. Keith, he does a good job dismissing, don't he? Amen. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Father, I thank you, Father, that your word and your spirit lives in us. I thank you, Father, we're strong in the Lord and the power of his mind and our pathway is life and there is no death. I thank you promotion comes from you. I thank you that you surround them with favors with a shield. And I thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And I thank you that you've taken sickness and disease away from the midst of them. That includes any virus or germ or disease. And I thank you they are satisfied with long life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Go on. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing.
everybody out again. Uh, fathers, don't forget to pick up your hats as you go out. Uh, we love you very much. We just hope you have a very happy Father's Day. Uh, we're going to dismiss out the back two doors.